Welcome to a short tutorial on how to set up a WordPress.com account. To get started, open your favorite web browser and enter WordPress.com into the URL box at the top of the screen. Once there, click the Get Started button to begin registering for an account. Clicking on this box will take you to this page. We'll cut it in half and try to make it a little easier to follow. That's better. The first thing WordPress.com wants to know is your email address. Don't worry, this is only to activate your account and to ensure that you're a human and not a computer. You won't receive too many emails after activation, so I would recommend using your primary personal or professional email address depending on what your blog will be about. Upon entering your email address, you'll notice that WordPress.com automatically enters your email username, dropping the email address's domain as the WordPress.com username. In my case, I may use Digital Charlotte 16 as WordPress doesn't have a user yet with that name. You may find that it suggests a username that is unavailable, or you may want to use a totally different username. In either of those instances, you will need to choose another username from those available. Once you have selected an avail available username, you'll need to create a password. To ensure your online safety, avoid simple and easy to guess passwords like your name 1212 or WordPress 12345. And make sure your password does not include a personal information like your birthday, driver's license, or social security number. Your password should be more complex. It should contain at least eight letters, numbers, and special characters like question marks, parentheses, or the dollar sign. The greater the variety of characters in your password, the better. Also, WordPress demands that password must be at least six characters long and not one that is commonly used. A good example of this would be this. After entering it in WordPress, you may hide your password by clicking the button to the right that says hide if you'd like to turn your password into non-descriptive characters. The last option on this page is to choose the blog address. This is what people can type in their URL box to find your blog without having to use a search engine. Just as last time, if your suggested username is not taken, WordPress will automatically enter it in as the first part of the URL. The second half, or the domain, has a few options. As you can see from clicking on the arrow, the other options cost money, so we'll be focusing on the free option, yourtitle.wordpress.com. To finalize this decision, you simply need to scroll to the bottom of the page and click the box that says Create Blog. Upon clicking Create Blog, this screen will appear. It wants you to access the email address highlighted in yellow. Don't worry, you don't need to keep this last page open, as the email will redirect you back to WordPress.com. Once you have accessed your email account, you'll find your email in your inbox from WordPress that looks something like this. If you don't receive this email within 30 minutes of clicking the Create Blog button, click the Didn't Get Your Email Yet button. Once you've received your email, click the Activate Blog button. Clicking the Activate Blog button takes you back to WordPress.com, where you'll have a few options pertaining to your blog. The first is the title. This can be anything you want it to be, but I would recommend it pertain to what you're going to focus on. For example, if you're a football fan living in Charlotte, Maybe you'll want to name your blog Cardiac Cat Corner, or something to that effect. Next up is the tagline. Although optional, it is a good idea to use this page to better define what your blog is going to discuss. To go with our title, maybe we'll insert Discussing Major Happenings of the Carolina Panthers. Lastly, we'll need to determine what language the blog will be in. I'll keep mine in English, but you're free to change yours as you wish as WordPress.com offers a wide variety of languages. Also, remember that you may change these options at any time, should you so choose. Once you've decided which language you'll use, click Next Step. The next step is to choose a theme. There's a great many of themes to choose from, and if you don't like any that are currently offered, you have the option of clicking Show More Themes to see more. As you can see, many themes are free, but some do come at a price. If you are a purchasing a theme, be cognizant of your decision regarding not only aesthetics, but also functionality and customer support provided by the designer. 
All of this information can be found by simply searching the title of the theme, designer name, and other modifiers on the internet search engine. Clicking the theme of your choice will take you to the theme customization page. We will have the options to fine tune the theme. We're going to skip this step in this video, but you are more than welcome to configure your blog to your demands by clicking customize it. Otherwise, click next step to continue on. Clicking the next step button takes you to the page that allows you to share your blog with your followers on Twitter or friends on Facebook, should you so, should you so choose. We'll also be skipping this step, but if you'd like to share your blog, feel free to click either of your choosing. We skip this step with me, click the next step button again. Finally, you're done and have the option to post your first blog post. The five buttons across the page will allow you to post either text, photos, videos, quotes, or links to your blog, depending on what you'd like to share. If you'd like to wait on posting your first blog, simply press the finish button to be taken to your dashboard. Thanks for watching and happy blogging.